Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I'm looking at a Ford S-Max 2 litre TDCI. Okay, so we've had the vehicle running here for about 15 minutes. We're trying to get all of the temperatures up to where they should be. You can see there it's got the engine management light on. It gives a engine malfunction message come up. So we're just doing some tests here and looking at the live data. So we've got the engine cooling temperature up to 92 degrees, which is where it should be to do the self-cleaning regeneration and um, what we've been doing to do that is we've just been accelerating the vehicle right up and we've got the temperature up now you can see that these two temperatures here exhaust gas temperature the maximum we got those up to was about 160 170 degrees so that is not reaching temperature to clean the dpf and you can see the dpf pressure there at idle is 30 millibars if we hold it up to 3000 rpm Let's just hold it at around about 3000 RPM. We've got around about 200 millibars or HPA of pressure. So where I'd like to see these numbers are is this under 10, the DPF pressure under 10 at idle, and at 3000 RPM I'd like to see it under 80. So if we put that on a chart there you can see it idles out in the middle there at 30 millibars. If we give it a full acceleration, peaks out at around about 350 and 3000 RPM around about 190 to 200 millibars okay so a customer told me a little bit of a story on this one he has tried to get some mecha local mechanics to have a look at the vehicle and none of them seem to be interested in it uh, he's got the engine light on he's now watched some of my videos and he's tried to sort of resolve the issues have he bought his own diagnostic scan tool and unfortunately a bit for me he has deleted some of the codes here uh, but he's showed me his scan tool uh, picture and there was a P244C exhaust temperature too low and a P246B uh, I think oh, we've got a P246B there yeah that's the vehicle in conditions conditions are incorrect so we had a p244c and a p244b which is the high pressure and the differential pressure sensor okay explanation on the codes we have a blocked dpf which has triggered off this forced limited power and then we have vehicle in conditions correct because of the p244c that exhaust gas temperature like I just showed you there, it's not reaching above 200 degrees. That's what's pick, picked off this code. Vehicle conditions are incorrect, and then that has blocked the DPF. So first you'll get this code come up, then that will trigger this one, and then you'll get this one here triggered afterwards. So just to confirm that the vaporizer is not working, or it's blocked, we can do a proper test on the actual part once we've got it off. But uh, without removing it, this is what I do. I will just prime up the vaporizer fuel system now while that's running we're going to give some accelerations to the car and if that vaporizer is injecting fuel into the system we should see clouds of smoke coming out of the rear of the car and if we don't see smoke we know the vaporizer is blocked but I already do know it's blocked just from that cold it had and the temperature is not reaching on the exhaust. The vaporizer is what raises the temperature within the DPF. So we can see there, we're not getting any smoke coming from the exhaust of the car. So that means I've got to go under the car now. I've got it checked up. Um, we're on a gravel drive driveway, yay. Um, I'm going to have to get under there and get the vaporizer out. Okay, just under the car, there is a little cross member here that we need to take off. A couple of 13 mil bolts on each side. And once they're all out, we should be able to just slide it off. It gives a little bit better access up to the vaporizer up there. 
So to get that vaporizer loose, there's a few things I'm going to do. One is use this lubrication fluid on it. Then I'm just going to give it a couple of vibrations with this uh, air hammer set. This is from WorkZueg. That's the part number there for it. So once I've lubricated it, lubricated it up and gave it some taps of the air hammer, I'm going to put some heat on it with this uh, blowtorch. And I've got here a vaporizer removal spanner. It's a 22 mil crossfoot spanner, basically. And we can use that with the half inch ratchet. Okay, I've got all the tools here ready. That's on an air compressor with a blowtorch and the lubrication and the spanner. So we're going to spray it up first. And another little bit. Now just to give it a little bit of a shock, I'm going to hit the base base of the uh, vaporizer here with the, with the chisel. I'm not sure if you can see that there, yeah. And then we're going to hit the thread just a little bit. Don't want to damage the thread too much. Just give it a few whacks just to just to shake it loose. Well, I'm gonna get the heat on it. Also, you can see that there is glowing red now. Now get our spanner on there, and we should hopefully. Some sort of movement on it. Let's be quite tight. It's moving a little bit. We might have to get some more heat back on it. So it's moved a little bit, but now it's stopped again. So we'll have to get some more heat on there. Okay, now we seem to have broken loose. So now we can just use an open-ended spanner here, just to uh, get the rest of it out completely. So once you just get it that far, it then turns really easily. It's just getting the first first couple of turns on where it's just seized in. Once you get it moving, it's you can almost do it by hand. And if you've got a decent pair of sort of heat proof gloves, you can uh, now just wind that out by hand and get it out. So what you'll find is the problem with the old vaporizer is this, you pump it up and the pressure slowly just comes down and that is because this little hole here is all blocked up with soot. Right so we can get the new part here fitted in and then we can uh, clean out the DPF. Okay we've now got all of that back together so we can go back inside the car. So we're going to switch the ignition on and we're going to prime up the new vaporizer again. Okay, we've got that working. Now we seem to have another issue here. Turn on that. We can't hear the pulsing coming from the vaporizer fuel pump. Now this vehicle has had a flat battery. The guy has been jump starting it, so I don't know if maybe, you know, if you jump start some of these new cars, you've got to be very careful. You can sort of blow fuses. So we're just going to see if we can find the fuse and make sure that's not blown. Okay, so just checking around the fuses. Um, I just pulled out a couple of the fuses, put them back in, and now the vaporizer seems to be working. Okay, so I've got my pedal depressor holding up the res there so we can get the temperature up. And we're going to use a bottle of this DPF cleaner in the vehicle. And that goes in with this DPF gun here. So I'm just under the vehicle here. We're just going to remove this, this pipe here from the DPF pressure sensor. So once that's removed, I just use a bit of a fuel hose there just to connect my gun up to it. Now we can squirt the fluid in. And then we can just uh, get that disconnected. It's a bit tight. Okay, we have another rainy day, so we're back inside the vehicle. 
and we shall get it started up. So we've got the fluid in there, we're just going to accelerate it up to around about 3000 RPM. Somewhere around there and hold it. So we'll just give it a few spike revs there just to kick start it off. And we should just now see the, the uh, pressure dropping down. So we are at around about 3000 RPM there. So we've come down from 200 so far down to 70. to 50, 40, 30, well, it's getting lower than expected really, you don't usually see them go that low, 20, well, it's dropped even lower than I've expected it to, to be honest, possibly too low, Accelerate it up a little bit. See where we're getting the pressure go to. At idle. I think sometimes the fluid can sort of confuse the sensor a bit. So I'm just going to recalibrate the differential pressure sensor. And we'll reset the particle filter values. We'll clear the fault codes. And now we've got the engine running, we'll just go back in and read the codes, make sure none of them have come back. That's all good. So the end result there at idle, we have zero pressure and we'll hold the revs up around about just over 3000 RPM. We got 40, we are on 3500 RPM, 40 millibar. That's it, we're back on idle, we're all done. So that's it, we're all finished on that. Uh, it did sort of throw me off a bit there with that uh, the vaporizer fuel pump. Um, it wasn't working at first, we messed around with the fuses, you know, just fiddling around with stuff and then suddenly it started working, so I assume it was just a loose connection, but uh, we'll tell the customer to keep, the eye, keep an eye on it. Um, if he gets any sort of fault codes, come back to him, we'll have to look a bit further into that, but as far as I could see, it was just loose connection on the fuse, um, and that's it. So that's another successful clean there, and we'll see you on the next video.